Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting ocean water. Okay guys, so for the sketch what we're going to do is that we're going to be making these really soft lines. And then we're going to be like connecting each um, tip of the of the wave. And we need to put a little bit of, um, how do I call that, um, randomness to the shape. So this is what we really need. We need to connect these tips. And then we have to put a little bit of um, shadow to it, like volume. We need some volume in there. So I'm doing kind of like a little shadow. Something like this could work really good. So that's what we need to do to start the to paint the ocean. We can do also little um, other little tips like this one. So that's how I did my sketch. For this part, I use a just a round brush, and the only thing that had has activated is that if we press F five, you can see there is only had other dynamics or transfer in the new Photoshop's. If I don't put that, it will be like just a hard line. But that's the only thing. It doesn't have shape dynamics. It doesn't have anything else. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is explain to you which brush I'm using. Uh, I'm going to take a really soft brush, this one is fine. The problem with this one is that you can easily notice that it doesn't have any prime pressure to it. If I press harder or softer, it doesn't matter to this brush. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to press F5, that opens the brush settings, or you can go to Windows Brushes. And you're gonna click on other dynamics right here or transfer in the new Photoshop. So I'm using CS3. So using other dynamics or transfer in the new Photoshop, what's going to do is that if you put pen pressure on the opacity jitter here, right here, pen pressure, you get the if you press um, soft, you get a soft line, if you press harder, you get a hard line. Um, hard in terms of opacity, not in terms of definition, because this brush is really soft and is what we need right now. Okay, so this part of the of the painting is really using a really soft brush, like the one I just explained. And basically, we wanted to use a really light color for the water first, um, then a middle tone, like um, a little bit more um, dark and then a, a really more darker one on the bottom. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain to you why is this uh, in a few seconds, but then what we need to do is put a little bit of uh, randomness on this uh, background that we're making. Um, with, the, with the other brush that I explained you how to create, not the softer one, but the, the hard one, but with the opacity, you can do these little shapes uh, under the surface and right now I'm just uh, erasing the edges uh, for the purpose of the tutorial <clears throat> okay so the effect that I'm trying to accomplish here is that the if we go deeper in water when when it's deeper it's darker put dark in here and here is light um, so more the more deep the water is the more light it should be but you could you could you will be able to see this only on the edge and if ne if it's near to something else like if there's something here like a boat or a post or something you should see how it disappears um, in the in the color of the water that's the effect that we should have um, other way to explain it is with this picture. You can see uh, if we go deeper in water, it goes dark. 
it goes more blue actually and if we go to the close to the coast it's light or transparent in this case it looks transparent because we are not that deep if we were like on where these boats are it will look something more like this uh, and you should be able to see the bottom of the boat right here and then disappear and here it happens but the boat the boat is little so you can only see a small part and of course it change also changes the color uh, but here what's happening with this boat is two things one is the the texture of the boat is different because of the time and the water and everything and also because of the color of the water changes change of things um, so that's the main reason we're doing this whole thing with the dark and light colors on the water okay so now we go to the reflections of the water you can take whatever colors you have on top uh, and treat them like if were lights if you see that arrow that I did here um, is because I'm trying to do something that is re reflecting from that side and it's kind of hard to understand at first but once you have done this like two or three times I, I actually have to do this two times before doing the tutorial you can get it uh, a little bit easier so you have to start treating it like it was, it was um, a light that is uh, bouncing from other place and I'm going to explain you in a few seconds how, how they did these little curves um, the colors I'm using a little bit gray because um, that's the color that I wanted to reflect and a little a light blue that I'm going to use in a few seconds also um, I'm going to explain to you how did I do this kind of like a curve um, thing with the with the brush it's not really difficult though it's just a movement of the hand and that's it uh, so I'm trying to do some variations in color here with the other blue and I'm trying to keep it really soft in opacity notice that I changed the opacity on the layer a few times right now it's about 20, 25 or 30 percent opacity that layer you can see is really soft and I keep changing it because I don't want to the hard light is going to come later Okay, so for the reflection that I'm telling you, I'm going to be doing this kind of like a motion with the brush that is really curves. Uh, that's the only way I can explain it, but it's going to be like with the shape of the of the wave. And for example, you only want to have to <clears throat> um, do the part that is going to be perpendicular to that, or you could do like few directions like it's going to hit here, it's going to hit here, stuff like that but you have to think that instead of doing those lines that I just told you you're going to be doing that in your own mind like in, here is a tip here is also another tip so you can do you can do it there but here it will be too much like you have to uh, do it that it fades it starts harder in here and then it goes uh, softer in this part and you're gonna have to do it like back and forth like to one side and then to the other like this to the right and then to the left but really little and soft and you can get this little this little um, shapes going on you may want to use your eraser for some time to get the softness and difference of opacity from the tip to the other part it's kind of tricky as everything like on the first time you just, you're not going to get it um, but if you're doing a lot of time it will be easier and the waves are kind of like this they go to the other side this way for that part what you're going to do is do it with a more um, little um, size of the brush and you can get that effects that it turned to the other side it's going to look like little lines <clears throat> so for the foam effects what we're going to be using is a really small brush um, I'm going to explain you in a few seconds how I did this but it's really easy to do actually 
Uh, it's not that complicated once you try a few times. Um, it's actually really fun um, to kind of know where to do it and how to how to learn doing it. So uh, you're gonna have really fun doing this part of the tutorial when you try it yourself. Okay, so for this part I'm going to be using the brush that we created, the one that we created at the beginning, not the soft, but the one with the hard edge and the opacity. And we're going to be using a grey color, we don't, want, we don't want completely white on this. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer and the brush has to be really really little, like, like a kind of like a point. And what I'm going to do is make this kind of... Um, random uh, shapes with the hand like you don't have to be too precise on doing it because you want this texture to to feel like it's, it's not perfect you know and we're going to be trying to accomplish um, this kind of shapes all the time um, that's the that's really fun to do actually and when once you get to the to the tip of the shape you can do a little bit of a splash like something like this and you can also do like more in the more in the edges and some parts you can just feel like this feel them <clears throat> also in the edges of the waves you can do it here. I'm doing it because it's supposed to be kind of like a cube of glass or something, and you can see that in the water when you have like a glass of water, you can see a little bit of these shapes um, on the edges. Uh, but this is ocean, so it's going to be a lot of foam um, all the time in the tips, and when the when the waves goes like this, uh, you can do a little bit of that too. And uh, it just takes time and your hand is going to be tighter a little bit because what I'm doing with the hand is this shape but it's really little like I'm trying to do this pattern I'm going to do it bigger here this is what I'm doing right here I'm trying to do it really little like this and that way you can get that texture going on um, if you are not used to this kind of movement, your your hand could hurt a little at the first, but instead, uh, again, it's more like um, because of the practice that you have with it. I'm really used to this kind of movement with the hand, so because that's the my way of painting. Uh, but once you once you do that, then you can use a lighter color and go a little bit more lighter on the tips. Now I'm using a lighter color and you can do a little bit more of detail on that. And you get that little variations on colors that are going to make your image, your foam pop out of your image. Something like that. So you can see here there's the final uh, foam and here's the one I'm doing right now. Alright. Okay, so in this part of the process, basically, I'm just choosing one color that is going to be the hard lights, the hard specular lights on this ocean. So, <clears throat> you should create a new layer to do this. And I'm, we're going to use the same motion, the same movements that we did for the reflection part. Only that these ones are going to be pointing to that really hard light. Uh, this is an actual light, like it's coming, it could be the sun, it could be some lights on a harbor or something, if it's a night um, a scene. And you can see how I kind of do a little soften of them with the smudge tool. Uh, you can get the smudge tool with the letter R on the keyboard. And basically it's just making a lot of this. Then you can do a second pass. If you're not happy with the result, you can just lower the opacity on this layer, create a new layer, and do, do a little bit more. <clears throat> uh, 
that's actually what I did right there. I created a new layer and uh, the one of the that I have before, I just put a little bit more, a little bit of opacity, maybe half, like 50%. And then you create, you can create a new light, new lines, <coughs> new shapes that are brighter and harder. And you can get this effect of light going on. Then what I'm doing here is going to the background um, layer. Uh, background meaning the colors that I had um, uh, before anything that I, that I put on top. And I just with the dodge tool which is with the letter O, I put a little bit more lightness in there. Then I took the the specular layer again and I did I changed the color a little bit with the image adjustments. And I get a little bit of yellow tone like you can see in there. It's not that white now. Um, and right now I'm using a hard um, hard brush. I'm using a hard brush because it makes I don't know. It, it was too soft at the end, so I wanted I wanted to do something more harder. And right now I'm putting a little bit of light on the on the foam, taking colors that I already have on the on my palette of colors. The palette of colors meaning the colors that I already had on the painting. And this is it. Here I'm doing a little bit of change on the brightness and contrast, but that's not that important. It depends on your taste. And here, as I said before, I'm just taking the colors with the eyedropper and just doing little variations, like a little bit of shadows everywhere, stuff like that. That could make the painting way more interesting. And this is it. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Hey guys, what's up? I know how important to you is to paint the skin. So I made this little guide of, of about 20 pages that it comes with all the skin tones, it comes with all the line arts, it, com it comes with all the textures that I made for these tutorials. Um, it comes with two videos, one about how to paint female skin and another one of how to paint male skin. So if you want to support this channel, this is the best way to do it. Uh, there is a link in the description. This is the preferred way for me because I feel like I give you something back for your donation. So if you want to get this material, there is a link in the description. Uh, the only thing that when you done the payment, you will have to wait for a few minutes to, for me to give you the link to your email personally because I write you personally to give you the link. Um, because I have to check on the PayPal account for the email or, or where the payment is done so I will personally send you a link to your email so if I take a little don't freak out it's totally normal uh, I have never uh, failed to deliver one of these materials so uh, thank you very much if you if you are interested in getting this material just uh, use the link in the description and thank you very much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. And you're helping me to create more content for the channel. Thank you very much.